Hi, and welcome to the Unnamed Knitting Podcast. This is, I don't even know what episode, I'm going to put it right here in big numbers, because it's been a hot minute since I recorded, and I didn't have show notes for the last couple of episodes. Uh, I know it's been over a month, I recorded it last week with the intent to put it up and never edited, and so therefore it never got put up. Um, basically, I'm the worst podcaster ever the past couple of weeks. Um, I have a lot to go over because, like I said, it's been a hot minute. Um, yeah, the last episode I have shown us for is episode 23, so I think this is either 24 or 25. Um, like I said, I've, I've, I've done some attempts at recording and just failed, so, um, yeah. Anyways, um, I guess we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, today is uh, Sunday, November 29th, and weather's a little gross in Texas. It's uh, not so much that it's cold, the cold I can handle, um, and it's not the rain, because the rain that I can handle. It's when you take the two and stick them together um, at the same time that... I start getting cranky. Um, I guess we're just gonna press forward. Work has been pretty much the same. Uh, it's it is what it is. I'm not I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about stuff that can't be changed, anyways. Um, so give me just one second to. Do some quick organizing. Okay, just gonna put this back here. That's my basket where I hold all of my stuff and at this point it's got spindles and pins and notions and pretty much nothing else. So I do have a couple of finished objects. Well I have let me pause for just a second and apologize in advance. I have no idea what you guys have seen at this point in my life, so we're just gonna kinda roll with it and if I show you something twice then you know you can just ignore it for a couple of seconds. Um so my only real finished object is my sock head hat, which is considerably less slouchy than um, the pattern calls for. The pattern calls for you to knit like 14 inches of hat and then do your decreases. Um, I forget how quickly decreases go, so I should have knit some more, but I'm, cons I'm still pretty happy with it. Um, so I did some slight changes from what the sock head hat calls for. Thank you. Um, they it just a sock head is a sock head. You you should probably know, but it's it's a free pattern. It's two by two ribbing. Um, then you switch if you do a smaller needle for the ribbing, then you switch up to a size um, US three, and then you knit for like another nine inches, and then you decrease. And the decreases are almost flat. Like, it, it almost flattens the top of the head, so that's why um, it's got this great shape. I will knit another one, um, but first let me tell you, um, so I did Twisted Rib, which I know I've talked about, and I know there are mistakes um, in various places, but I don't care. It's a hat, it's warmer than no hat, and it's wool, so it's warmer than the other hats I have. Um, then right about, let's see, I can see it, I don't know if anyone else can, right about here, yeah, I know you can see it, um, I picked up a few stitches, I think it was a total of 18, um, to compensate for the fact that I don't own, um, I didn't take with me a, the next size up of needles, um, and then obviously I didn't knit quite as long, I knit to about three three inches past the four inch brim um, and I should have gone longer with it but I do like it um, it doesn't like I said it doesn't slouch much but it slouches to a point where it's just got a little bit of I don't even know if you'd call it slouching but I mean I can wear it further back on my head to get that texture <laughs> but I've never been concerned you know with I mean 
my hair is gonna do that whether it's a really long hat or a really short one so but this is the um, Blendvine uh, Strasse sock base um, the colorway is Royal Amber but it was a misfit skein um, it's obviously much greener than her um, standard Royal Amber which I love um, so there's that so what you saw a moment ago was me lying to you um, I have another finished object that I had forgotten about because it was over there um, this is a hat that I knit for Steven um, as y'all can see there's some color work involved he did some Christmas tree and some naughty moose slash reindeer and um, my gauge was very wrong for the pattern that I was knitting. It called for 104 stitches cast on, and this ended up being somewhere in the realm of 80, 84, um, 82, somewhere in there. Um, so there's a big field of it's definitely got a front and a back. Um, but I'm very proud of this. None of my floats are ridiculously loose. I don't know why, but I always love the back side of color work. Um, so I mean, there, they, it, it needs some work, but um, and I was going to line it, but it turns out that my color work made it a little too tight for his head. Um, it's not as stretchy as um, regular knitting, and so instead of lining it with fleece, we've just left it alone. He says it's pretty warm, anyways. Um, relatively standard as far as hat goes. One by one ribbing, color work chart. Um, I'll put a link to the pattern in the show notes if. I post them. Um, I'll, I will do my best to post show notes today because I don't think I did any last time. Um, but color work pattern. I did a uh, single stripe of the orange um, and it got to a point where there was supposed to be another a band of color work that said um, I'm going to put it here because we don't cuss on this show. It's a family friendly show. Um, but there was supposed to be a round of color work above this with some words and then another round of color work with some snowflakes um but like i said my gauge was way too way too big for this project so some some alterations had to be made i will probably go down a yarn size um and try again at some point but not with this yarn this stuff is um Crafter's Secret, I believe, um, and then obviously it's Camouflage and Hunter Orange, because I'm dating a redneck, guys. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing, as far as finished objects go, is really a half object, or a partial object. I don't know how what, what I've decided I'm using. It's been a crazy week. I'm very tired. Um, and there's an end that not, that's not woven in, so forgive that. Um, but I have a sock, um, and this sock is, um, revived from the first socks that I ever knit. I ripped them out, um, much to my chagrin. I was hoping and hoping that they would shrink, but they're super wash, and, um, they were just knit too big, so, uh, same stitch count, just down to a, um, let me see what I am. Where did I make this one? There it is, I see it. Oh, uh, US one and a half, which is a two and a half mil needle. Um, instead of the three, US three, which is, I believe, a f I don't know. Let me do a quick Google, because I don't know anything right now. Um, A US three is a three millimeter needle, and that was considerably much much too large. Um, so I have a sock. Um, it's just a standard. I, I did switch to a one by one rib, which I don't think I like for socks because it's really loose on my ankle. Um, Twenty rows of uh, stockinette stitch, standard heel flap, vanilla orchid heel by Yarn Over New York. Um, and then as far as my foot required, and then I did the star toe, and it fits 
much better than it's actually considerably snugger than my um, other pairs of socks recently so that's good um, so yeah so that is the last of the finished slash half object no, no, no. where's my blanket we're gonna talk about my blanket later um, so for works in progress I have two knitting and one um, two knitting and two crochet this is the I'm not gonna untangle this so you're just gonna have to use your imagination this is the cuff and a few the first few rows of the um, leg for sock number two um, however I was knitting at my family's Thanksgiving gathering and I discovered that I dropped a stitch right about there and it's kind of hard for you to see but it's a good six rows down um, I have not decided how I'm going to fix it I might just grab my um, I have a little teeny tiny crochet hook and I may just kind of loop it back up and hope that it doesn't pull too tight or I might have to tink and I hope I don't have to tink because it was seven rows and I mean seven rows in stocking it on sock yarn is not as much as seven rows of moss stitch on a gigantic coat um, but it's still seven rows so I don't know really what I'm gonna do with that um, I'm going to finish it eventually um, but it's just not happening at the moment um, this is um, part stash enhancement and part uh, work in progress. I have one fingerless mitt, um, which not only is it my first fingerless mitt, it's also my first cabled project. Um, this pattern is the axle fingerless mitts. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, so I have the first one finished with the ends woven in, and then the second one I have gotten to the... I'm at this point um, so not the start of this third cable, but I just knit the row underneath that first cable. I've split for the thumb, um, and pretty soon I will, I'm probably going to finish this today, um, because, just because it's super bulky weight yarn, um, and it is very, very, um, squishy. These were supposed to be a Christmas gift, um, However, the little brat that they're for no longer likes purple, and this color is not true at all. This is like a um, midway between fuchsia magenta um, color. The, this one's a little bit more accurate than this one for some reason. Um, and this is a super bulky merino that I won in a giveaway from um, Hot Knit Yarns slash L's Yarns. No, uh, not Hot Knit Yarns. Savvy schemes, I think. I don't know. I'll update you on that when we get to stash enhancement because I have to get up and get the other yarn, anyways. Um, so, yeah. That's all the knitting, um, but there is crochet. I have um, scrapped, the, I don't remember if I talked about this in an episode that I have published or not, but I have scrapped the Passione Amorosa shawl um, because the the rows were taking way too long um, and they already they were already taking too long and they weren't long enough um, to go around my shoulders so that I could just um, continue straight in a straight down manner um, so all of that yarn got unwound and I have started I think I have talked about this before um, I have started a gigantic granny square and you're like what that's gonna take forever too and I'm like I know um, however, this is going considerably faster when I actually work on it than the shawl was, and this gigantic granny square is basically going to get folded in half, um, and then these ends down here where my hands are are going to become sleeves, and this end that's kind of a mouth talking to you guys right now is going to be the body, and it's going to be a gigantic, um, granny square sh shrug, um, I'm not sure if it doesn't work then it's just going to be a small blanket or something 
Um, <laughs> but if it doesn't, um, if it doesn't do what I want it to, then I'll give it away or throw it away. I'm not, I'm not so attached to this yarn so yet that I just have to have something made out of it. So, um, so there's that. Uh, my next work in progress, um, I saw an article last night um, about this woman who takes plastic bags and cuts them into strips like this and t joins them together and balls them up into enormous plastic bag balls. Um, and she creates um, sleeping mats for the homeless with them. And I am honestly not that dedicated. Um, if I want a community service project later on down the line where a lot of people are helping, maybe. Um, but I happen to have a gigantic bag full of grocery bags sitting around my apartment. And I have started this circle, which is going to be the base of a um, basket. And this one, being a test case, is not super pretty on the bottom. But this will, if this works, this will be a basket to hold my spinning fiber. Um, and then I'm going to make one or two or three for my aunt because she likes stuff like this. Um, speaking of spinning, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to make myself comfortable and it's not working. Um, speaking of spinning, let's see, let's talk about these in the order that you've seen them. So, last time we talked, I had, um, started spinning and almost finished spinning the singles of a Rolex that Jess Ann sent me. Um, link to her Instagram right about here. Um, and this is the Autumn Kisses yarn. I don't remember off the top of my head what the yardage on this puppy was. Um, somewhere in the realm of 140, 120 I think. Um, it is a probably about a sport to DK weight. Um, and the colors in this thing are just incredible. It looks all like pink and white from here, but there's yellow, there's brown, there's blue, uh, there's a little bit of purple. And then my favorite thing about this particular skein, I'm sure other ones do it, um, but it was really white the first time I wound it up. And now it looks like a special, there we go. And now it's basically got a whole different color to it. Um, there you can maybe see some of the browns, and there is some gold right about there. Um, yeah, so very proud of this one. I'm also very proud that I got through this one. Um, this is my uh, party bug dizzed batlets from Bakewell Hearts. Um, I won these in a giveaway, um, and it basically sat long enough for me to show y'all the <laughs> package the next day, and I started spinning. Um, they sat on the spindle quite some for quite some time after I got this one, just because I was like, gotta go, gotta go. I love spinning Rolex, because um, they don't break as easily as regular fiber. Um, I'm not going to unwind this one for y'all, because it's pretty much the same throughout. Uh, greens and purples, little bits of pink and blue. Um, and if I unwind this one, it's very fuzzy and it kind of sheds all over the place. So there's that. Um, next one was a quick. I basically just spun. This is a one of those hundred percent merino cupcakes that I ordered from Steph Nitz on Etsy. Um, it's blue turquoise brown. Um, I broke the fiber by accident about halfway through, and so I kind of just threw it on the sofa, finished the part that I was doing, and then I connected it to the wrong end, but I don't care. Um, I really love these colors, and I'm hoping that I can, um, I don't remember my yardage on this, to be honest, and I'm not trying to count at the moment, but um, I'm hoping that I can combine the colors of this with another uh, couple of my hand spuns and make something interesting. Um, and then this one I finished last night. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen it. Um, this is 
approximately 63 yards of a two-ply. Um, I basically just had three little butterfly bits that were the same color. It's obviously not very balanced because if it was, it would look like this, and I overspun it a little bit. Um, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, so the color, I, I believe this is the color I mustachioed, or at least part of it was. Um, so this is basically, you get reds, you get browns, you get some purple, you get a lot of sparkle in all of those colors. Um, merino, tussa silk, and bamboo, and stellina. Um, I think. It might not be stellina, it might be firestar. I don't know the difference, you guys. I remember somebody asked the difference somewhere and I was like, ooh, I need to know this, and I read all the comments and they were like, one is dyeable and one has to be dyed in the factory and uh, blah 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 blah. I don't know which is which. I don't. Um, it actually might have both because there's different textures of sparkle in here as well. Um, so those are the finished spinning. And then um, I decided last night because we had time to watch one more episode of Stargate, um, that I was going to do a really quick, really dirty spin, um, and this is what I got. Um, this was another butterfly bat. I'm pretty sure it was a leftover from one of her art bats because it's all of the colors, all of the silk, all of the sorry silk shreds, which is one of my new favorite things in spinning. Um, but this one was very much out of my comfort zone because, as you can see, it's got all of these crazy colors in it. I was terrified that it was all going to turn to mud, um, but it's actually relatively... Um, the colors are still pretty defined, which is interesting to me. Um, I probably will never spin something this crazy again, uh, at least not in the near future, and I need to figure out something to do about applying this. I tried to spin more thickly, but I cannot get past a um, if, as far as a single goes, I cannot get past a heavy fingering weight to save my life. Um, I think that will be different once I have a wheel, but getting a wheel is not on the immediate to-do list, so. But, there's that. Um, I'm not sure how I'll apply it. I will update, update you when I do. Um, and now... I'm going to take a small break because I need to fetch something from the stash, and I'll be right back. So, because I don't know what y'all have seen and what you haven't, um, as far as stash enhancement goes, this is going to be a crazy episode. Um, like, borderline psychotic. Uh, I'm going to go in as much order as I possibly can. Uh, we're going to start by talking about that um, giveaway that I just received, um, which was the purple... God, that color is not right at all. Um, nope. This is basically, this is fuchsia magenta. Um, I don't know where I put the ball band. It's in my It's in my book of ball bands. Hang on. I don't know which one it is. There we go. Alright. So, the book of ball bands, because you gotta keep them, it's just not an option. Um, El Rey Chunky Merino Superwash. Um, I did not keep the. I did not keep the uh, colorway on the ball band, so it probably was just a number. Um, but yeah. So then this is um, Hot Knit Yarn, uh, which is the store. Her store is called Elle's Yarn Stash, and Elle, I believe, is her baby, um, who is so cute. Um, this is Simple Sock, 463 yards to 100 grams, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Um, and it does not have a colorway. Of course it doesn't. That would be just ridiculous. Um, but, 
it's very very squishy it's very very soft um it's basically like blues and whites and there's some dark gray black in there um as you can see here fairly well um my color is just not cooperating with me today so so sorry um this is staying in the skein until I've knit up some of the other stuff that's been balled up recently. Um, I'm not sure, but I, I'm thinking socks because I don't have very much in the way of variegated sock yarn, and this is this is definitely variegated. Um, but because it's got that white in it, I'm really not sure because the last thing I need is white socks that are hand knit, and then I actually wear them like socks are supposed to be worn and then I walk through a mud puddle and just get busy at myself so um but yeah so one more quick glamour shot um I will link her Etsy store and her um whatever else I can in the show notes um I had two balls of this um I'm not getting up again to get the buttons that I bought to go with it but I had two balls of this uh, Cascade 220 Superwash. I mean, you guys, you guys know about Cascade 220. Um, the color is 1950 Hunter Green, um, and right now it definitely looks like a, a Hunter kind of foresty green to me. Um, but the color that I'm seeing on my screen is very, very accurate in terms of what I saw in the store, and the reason I bought it was because it was this dark teal color that I see. Um, and that was one of the colors that my Magic Swap partner had. Um, men specifically mentioned that she really loved, so that's what she got. Um, I made the gothic lace cowl out of this. Um, I will try to remember and insert some photos. Obviously, it's already gone. It's past. It's past Thanksgiving, so obviously, she's already received it. Um, in matter of fact, I need to post pictures. Um, in matter of fact, I need to post pictures of my magic swap package once I have finished here, um, because I said I was going to do that last week <laughs> um but so there is the cascade 220 in the hunter green colorway um excuse me the next thing i'm trying to i'm trying to do the things that will take less time first so that i don't forget them um i am pretty sure it was in my mailbox on friday but i went and checked the mail earlier in the day than normal um, this is a Christmas themed bag from the lovely Debbie Reese. Um, I know her tag is in. Like I said, I am immediately put your herb, um, a project in this. So, Debbie Reese Designs. Um, she is on Etsy, so I'll link her in the show notes as well. Um, uh, it's just a, it's a standard um, sock sized bag, or obviously. Uh, fingerless mitt size bag. Um, um, I picked up this, which is backwards in this package, uh, which is this, the holiday version. Let me see if there's a date on this. There's not. Um, but it's the, it's the Christmas edition of Molly Makes. Um, there's some really cute stuff in here. Uh, the real, um, the real reason I picked it up was because it came with this, which is a wall hanging loom kit, and I, of course I busted into everything because, you know, that's how I am, um, but it's got the wooden loom and the little shuttle-y thing, and you, I don't, don't know how it works. I haven't read the instructions. I mean, it's a weaving. I mean, I did this as a kid in grade school, so I can pretty much figure it out. Um, I don't know where the pink um, needle got off to, uh, but it did come with yarn for the warp. I follow enough people on Instagram to know that. Um, and then it came with these three colors for the actual weaving part. Um, this is probably as far as my weaving will ever go, but... Um, It'll be nice to make like little uh, coasters or something or other out of my hand spun leftovers or something like that. So, um, so, um, yeah, 
this is already a long episode, but I've still got a couple more things to show y'all. We are going to start. No, I said I say start. We should. We're going to continue with. Um, sorry about the crinkly. This. This is my magic swap box. Um, and I'm not going to lie to you. I got a little emotional going through this thing because it was, um, so I sent my box, my package to, um, Flo, who is, um, Anyways, so my swap, I sent my package to Flo, and I received the package from Heidi, who is, um, because, because the FO and Die gang talk about her all the time, I'm okay with this. Her name is Smooshy Bear, and I'm not going to let you read this, but basically, um, the magic theme that she went with was unicorns, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, she watched the podcast to figure out what does that mean and I and I was just blown away um, I'll try to show this stuff to you in the as close to correct order as possible um, a while back I said something about needing to buy a gigantic project bag for my blanket um, and of course unicorns so I now have a gigantic project bag for my blanket, um, which is here. We'll talk about that in a second. Inside this gigantic project bag were, it was a cute little, pretty sure it's lavender, little sachet. It's got, oh, I didn't notice the color, the fabric was different colors. Oh, no, that makes sense. Um, so that's the top of the bag, and that's the middle of the bag with the actual unicorns on it. Um, it has this lovely stripey kind of reminiscent of rainbow bright um, and there's a pocket which is perfect for my needles and my little thingy that I made to toss my notions in. Um, and I've got my um, my uh, darning needle and my stitch markers in here, which I need to fish that one, not that one. I'll fish this one out. Um, I really only have two because one I really only have two in here because one was already attached to my blanket and the other one um, just kind of demanded to be used on the blanket. Um, it is this little star charm with a blue uh, bead on it. Um, so yeah. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Really quickly, I'll show you the minis that she sent me and then we'll talk about the blanket. We'll pause for a second to talk about the blanket. So these little guys are um, both baby gnome mini schemes. Er, House gnome, uh, no. The words aren't working today, y'all. Um, <laughs> house gnome base, um, gnome maker's yarn. This is the baby gnome colorway. Um, and I tried so hard to be good and not add any uh, minis to my blanket from this package, so you could see them all. And I failed a little bit, um, but not badly. Um, and then this one is in the beast colorway, which I'm thinking is an X-Men reference. Um, if I'm wrong, feel free to, uh, correct me, but there's that. Um, additionally, I was just, Heidi, you went above and beyond, and I feel kind of, um, what's the word here, um, I don't, I don't know what the word is, but I, I feel like I didn't go far enough because this package was just incredible. Um, so let me line these out. Um, I think that's all of them. Um, so there was this one, which is 
um, Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino Light in the Logwood colorway. Um, bless her heart, these little bags with the draw plastic drawstring bags. She's like, oh, I just sent you some of these because I know you said you liked them. And I just, like I said, the amount of time she put into this was incredible. Um, this is a Malabrigo sock, but it was deep stash, so she has no idea what color it was, which is totally cool. It's going to go on a blanket anyway. Um, this one, Desert Vista Dye Works in the Viso base, Merino Nylon Stellina. Um, this is the Opal Opals colorway from the Australia line, which this is probably going to be my favorite one, because look at that bright pop of green in there. Um, this one is the Dream in Color Jilly in the Mod Squad colorway. Um, this one and the Tosh Merino Light were a single, which scares me a little bit, because last time I knit with something that was in a single, granted it was acrylic, but um, it kind of unraveled really easily. So I will probably be putting those in this kind of hole where I don't have to cast on any stitches um, because I don't want to I don't want to break the yarn basically I don't want to ruin it um, this one is Knit Picks Felici in the rainbow colorway um, it looks like I got pink, blue, yellow, and green um, and it it is very soft. Like, I'm very surprised by, um, I'm very surprised by the fact that this is so soft for it being, um, a basically commercial yarn. Um, I've heard people talk about how much they like Felici, but I'm surprised. Um, and all of these tags, I don't know if you can see them, is but they've got all these little fairies and flowers and stuff on them. This one is... Madeline Tosh, another Tosh Marina Light, in the plaid blanket colorway, which is just going to knit up delightfully. Um, I can't wait to see how this color plays together, um, especially those little pops of golden brown. Found a knot. Oh well. Um, and there were two of this one, but because it's still in the skein, I'm going to show you this one first. Um, this is FO and Die in the jasmine base, which is 75 merino, 20 nylon, 5 stellina, in her twilight sparkle colorway. Um, and like I said, there were two of them. That was the first one I knit in my effort to be good, um, because, oh, there's still two. I can still show you the one in the skein. Um, it knits up amazingly in this, um, in my blanket. I'm very happy with this one. Um, it's more pink than I thought it would be, um, but I was very excited. Ow! Just get a little closer to y'all. Um, and then this one is a Lady Pearl Designs, who is an Etsy seller, um, and the colorway is A Leaf in the Wind. And it is... Car alarms! Um, it is just, is really pretty. I really love that gold color that's in there. Um, and I'm not done. Let me stick this in my ball band book so that I'm going to glue it in. This, back in there. I have all kinds of stuff going on right now. Um, and then of course, she made the bag, because that was the, the part that she made. Um, and it's... It's the bandwagon blanket is not very large yet, but this bag is huge. And even when it gets to a point where the blanket is getting big enough that I can't keep minis in here with it, um, it's downright perfect, Heidi. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have been playing with this bag. I just been like hanging out with it. Um, even the Drawstring is a rainbow. And there's little hearts on it. So cute. Um, next, let's see what's a little swills in here. She sent me some more of these cute drawstring bags, so I'll probably be using those for swaps. Um, 
the next couple that I use, or next couple that I sign up for. Um, okay, I've got all the things now. Oh, goodness. Where do I start? Um, tea. She sent me a mother load of tea. Um, so, this one, I know I liked because, I knew I liked, so I drank it first. Um, because we have several boxes of this at work, and that's what I drink when I'm too lazy to make coffee. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm drinking now. Um, and then some of these I have never even heard of. Um, this is Numi Organic Moroccan Mint. Um, and then a green tea kombucha, which I'm, I've heard weird stuff about kombucha teas. I'm not sure, but it's here. I'm going to try it. Um, a classic chai, which you can't go wrong with a chai tea. Cannot. Um, very excited about this one. Chocolate mint oolong. Um, oolong tea, peppermint, chocolate flavor, cocoa powder, carob powder. Um, three to five minutes brewing time, um, and it's a stash tea, which means it's probably going to be good. Um, this, which has zero indication of what it actually is, I mean the flowers, I don't know, I have no idea what this is, it's kind of a mystery, so I'm hoping that um, it's something interesting, I don't know. Um, but I'm definitely going to keep that package because it's pretty. And then all of the rest of these are this. She sent me an entire box of salted caramel tea. Um, I mentioned once on the podcast that I liked caramel or salted caramel flavored stuff, and um, and Heidi took it and ran. Um, she also sent me a hello, my name is salted caramel uh, bar. Of course, I'm just saving the package to show you because I ate it as soon as I opened the box. Um, I did manage to save half of it until the next day, but I ate it as soon as I opened the box. Um, I also got a couple of these um, No Makers buttons. This one is a uh, our yarn is downright riveting with Rose the Riveter on it. And then this one No Makers, Breaking Yarn Diet since 2010. Um, and this is the incredible button pack duo of awesomeness. Um, so, there are those. And, uh, da, 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 da. Let me show you this stuff first. Um, once again, like I said, she she really went above and beyond um, in terms of what I expected out of this swap. Um, so she sent me some of these gorgeous, and they're all they're all slightly different. So I'll just show you a couple. Um, there are a bunch of different floral buttons. Um, there are polka dot buttons. Um, this one's a turquoise, there's a dark blue and a pink, and a red, and a yellow and a green. Um, and then there's also three of these adorable. And I have no idea what to do with these, but I will find something because they are the cutest thing. There's three of these. Um, they're the cutest little thing. Um, so there are those. Additionally, I don't know. I don't even remember talking about buttons. I don't. Um, I love them, but I don't remember talking about them. Um, these are. Um, Handmade porcelain buttons from Melissa Jean. I'm going to look and see. Let's see here. She has a website. Um, 
and there is this gorgeous, gorgeous yellow button, which is, and then this one, um, I'm going to have to find something to make this the centerpiece, because it is just incredible. It's so, I don't, it's just pretty. It's just pretty. Um, so I'm going to keep those wrapped safely in their bubble wrap. And stick them back in this bag with the other buttons. Um, there's also, there's a little card. I guess I need to open this because there's a card in a little uh, card in it, and I hadn't looked at it before. Um, oh, it's tucked woolens. Um, it's a lavender scented sock soap sampler. Um, I'm guessing that there were more samples, but this one's lavender. Um, lather soap generously under bowl. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then she tied it up to the bowl. Um, but yeah, no, I'm actually very excited. Um, it's very strong, that's for sure. Um, So I'm going to keep it in this bag to kind of preserve the scent. Um, and there's still more. There's still like three, four more things to show you from this amazing package. Um, I'm going to find places for all this stuff. Um, because you can always use them. There are... These adorable little owly tissues. Um, they're almost too cute to use, but they're going in my purse now that I've showed them to you. Um, this cute little journal um, with a little star shaped um, paper clip on it. And I'm fairly certain that it is just, yes, it's just blank on the inside. Um, but, uh, whoop, that one. Um, and then sh there's also a really cute pink jelly roll pen. Um, to write in it with, so I'm going to keep those together, and um, I already have a notebook for my purse, but maybe I'll save that this one for when that one runs out, and um, I'll use it then. But finally, the last thing that is in this glorious package. I really thought this package was never, ever, 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 ever going to end um, when I was opening it because there were just so many things in it. Um, this is my very first ball of opal. Um, this is the... Um, I'm not even going to try to read it. Um, But 75% wool, 25% polyamide, um, I don't, I don't know, but it's, it's soft, um, even, oh, but this is the, um, Siamese fighting fish, um, colorway. It's got all these gorgeous purples and greens in it. I cannot wait to knit this. This is definitely going to be socks. Um, I thought for about three seconds that it might be a shawl because it was a full 100 gram ball. Um, 425 meters. I presume that's about 400 yards. Um, but the 
uh, translations, in, or not translations, the conversions in my head are just not quite there. Um, so, but, Opal. Um, and this was purchased apparently at, so, um, you think I'm done because I'm sitting at an hour, uh, but I'm not. <laughs> I have still got one, two more things to show you. Um, and they are in this bag. Because guess where I went yesterday? Can you see that? I was just a knitting fairy. Um, I purchased two things. Um, the first thing, which was kind of my intent in going there, plus they had free cookies yesterday, um, was this one skein white, uh, excuse me, colorway 5618 snow, um, cascade yarns, heritage, sock yarn, um, superwash merino nylon, um, I am going to be doing a couple more dye experiments, and because the last dye experiment was not on fingering weight, fingering weight yarn, um, I can't put it in my blanket. And so, that's kind of the idea here, is that I have enough to put it in my blanket. Um, so that's that. The other thing is this gorgeous, um, I'm going to take it out of packaging, but I just want you to see it. Um, Crabgeous Fibers Color Shift Top. Um, it's another BFL braid, kind of like the one that's been sitting in stash for a while. Um, I'm not going to... Hang on, crinkle, 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 crinkle. I'm not going to spin this right away, but I just wanted to show you guys the gorgeousness of this gradient. I mean, it is so beautiful. Um, this is definitely going to be spun end to end and then um as thinly as I possibly can and Navajo applied um so that I have something to this actually might wait until I get a wheel because Steven's been talking about trying to figure out how to build one out of PVC pipe recently so this might wait until I get a wheel so that I know that I can just spin it continuously um Actually, my other thought was to split the braid down the middle and two ply, um, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that's going to go, but it's really, really gorgeous. Um, I don't even know. I just throw stuff on the floor. Um, I honestly don't know whether this has. Um, whether Fabulous Fibers has a website. Um, it's labeled BGD, uh, which at the store is Butterfly Girl Designs. Um, so I don't know really whether. I don't know whether it's the same one or not. Um, but it's gorgeous. I can't wait to spin it, um, but I'm going to wait to spin it, and, um, now I am out of things to talk about. So, I'm going to spend the next hour-ish editing this web, this, uh, thing, <laughs> this episode, and then I'm going to, um, start uploading and then I'll get back to actually knitting things because, you know, um, that sock needs fixed and now it's glaring at me. I can see it. It's right there. It's right there. Um, so, hopefully it will not be a month before I see you guys again. I sincerely apologize. I promise I'm not dropping off the face of the earth. I'm just lazy. Um, and there are times, especially with it being winter now, it gets dark. Um, Pretty quickly in the afternoons. If it's not dark before I get home, it is within like 20 30 minutes of me getting home, and um, that makes for unpleasant recording. So, I mean, not that the rainy, gray, disgusting weather is any better, um, 
but um, typically my only time to record is on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, so yeah, I'll try to record more often going forward. I hope you all have a happy knitting week or however long it is until I see you again. And um, that's really it. Bye, you guys.